Exploring the superolateral surface of the brain, gyri, sulci, and lobes. The image presented shows the superolateral surface of the brain, specifically the cerebral hemispheres. The surface of the cerebral hemispheres in humans exhibits irregular folds, which serve to increase the surface area of the cerebral cortex. These folds are known as gyri, singular gyrus, while the grooves between them are called sulci, singular sulcus. Three significant sulci are highlighted in the image, the central sulcus of Rolando, the lateral sulcus or Sylvian Fisher, and the parieto-occipital sulcus, better visualized on the medial view of the cerebral hemisphere. It is important to note that these sulci tend to be consistent across all human brains. The surface layer of gray matter on the cerebrum is primarily composed of neuronal cell bodies making up the cerebral cortex. Anatomically, the cerebrum is divided into four lobes, each with specific functions, separated by prominent fissures. Frontal lobe, responsible for higher executive functions, including decision-making, planning, and motor control. Temporal lobe, processes sensory information, such as auditory input, language, and memory formation. Parietal lobe, integrates sensory information from various modalities, including touch, pain, and spatial awareness. Occipital lobe, serves as the primary center for visual processing and interpretation. The central sulcus of Rolando separates the parietal lobe from the frontal lobe. The parietal lobe extends posteriorly to the parieto-occipital sulcus, which demarcates the boundary between the parietal and occipital lobes. The lateral sulcus of Rolando separates the frontal and parietal lobes from the temporal lobe located below. The frontal lobes are primarily associated with decision-making functions and are considered the decision-making part of the brain. They play a crucial role in voluntary conscious actions, both in the present and in planning for the future. Motor activities are also closely linked to the frontal lobes. Additionally, certain parts of the frontal lobes are involved in the processing of emotions through their connections with the limbic system. The parietal lobes have sensory and visuospatial functions. They integrate multiple sensory inputs, allowing for the perception and interpretation of various sensory stimuli. Visuospatial functions enable an individual to understand and navigate the surrounding environment, including spatial awareness and depth perception. The temporal lobes are closely associated with the auditory system, responsible for processing and interpreting auditory information, including the sense of hearing. On the dominant side of the brain, typically the left side for the majority of individuals, the temporal lobes are involved in language functions. The medial aspect of the temporal lobes, not visible in this perspective, plays a significant role in memory functions and is also part of the limbic system, which is involved in emotion and memory regulation. The occipital lobes, although not visible in this perspective, are primarily associated with the visual system. They are responsible for processing visual information received from the eyes, allowing for the perception, recognition, and interpretation of visual stimuli. The insula. The image depicted showcases the insula, which is considered the fifth lobe of the cerebrum. It is also referred to as the island of Ryle. The lateral fissure has been opened, revealing the insula beneath the cortical tissue. The function of this cortical area has been a subject of debate over the years. However, it is believed that the insula is responsible for receiving taste sensations, which are relayed from the brainstem. Sensations from our internal organs may also reach the cortical level within the insula. 
It is involved in processing and integrating visceral sensory information, contributing to our awareness of internal bodily states. Additionally, certain parts of the insula have connections with the limbic system, which is associated with emotions and memory regulation. It is important to note that within the lateral fissure, specialized cortical gyri for hearing, audition, can also be found. These gyri are part of the upper surface of the superior temporal gyrus, located within the lateral fissure. Sulci and gyri, functional areas of the superolateral surface of the brain. Frontal lobe. The precentral sulcus runs parallel to and in front of the central sulcus. The precentral gyrus, located between the precentral and central sulci, contains the primary motor cortex, functional area number four. It extends medially on the brain's surface up to the paracentral lobule and is responsible for the voluntary control of movements on the opposite half of the body. The motor homunculus represents a topographic map of body parts within the precentral gyrus. Body parts with higher sensitivity or fine motor skills are represented in larger areas, progressing from medially to laterally, toes, ankle, knee, hip, trunk, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, little finger to thumb, eye, facial expression, mouth, chin, tongue, and swallowing. The remaining part of the frontal lobe is divided by two main sulci, the superior and inferior frontal sulci. These sulci separate the superolateral surface of the frontal lobe into the superior, middle, and inferior frontal gyri. These gyri extend anteriorly to posteriorly. The frontal eye field, areas 6 and 8, is located at the posterior part of the middle frontal gyrus. It controls voluntary saccadic eye movements, and stimulation of this area causes contralateral conjugate deviation of the eyes. The premotor cortex is situated just anterior to the primary motor cortex within the frontal lobe. It occupies part of Brodmann's Area 6 and is involved in the planning and execution of motor movements. The inferior frontal gyrus is further divided into the pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars opercularis by the anterior ascending and anterior horizontal branches of the lateral sulcus. The pars triangularis and pars opercularis contain the motor speech area, Broca's area, Broadman areas 44 and 45, which is connected to Wernicke's area via the arcuate fasciculus. Its primary function is speech production. The prefrontal cortex covering the anterior part of the frontal lobe contains Brodmann areas 8 to 14, 24, 25, 32, and 44 to 47. It is involved in emotions, concentration, and attention. Parietal lobe. The post-central sulcus runs parallel to and posterior to the central sulcus in the parietal lobe. The postcentral gyrus lies between the central sulcus and postcentral sulcus. This gyrus contains the primary sensory area, Brodmann areas 3, 1, and 2. The primary sensory area extends medially on the brain's surface up to the paracentral lobule. It receives input from the ventral posterior nuclei of the thalamus and interprets touch, pain, temperature, and proprioceptive impulses. The sensory homunculus represents a topographic map of body parts within the postcentral gyrus. Similarly to the motor homunculus, body parts with higher sensitivity or fine motor skills are represented in larger areas, progressing from medially to laterally. Genitals, toes, feet, leg, hip, trunk, neck, head, shoulder, arm, elbow, forearm, wrist, hand, little finger to thumb, eye, nose, face, lips, oral cavity, tongue, and pharynx. The remaining parietal lobe is divided by the intraparietal sulcus into the superior parietal lobule 
and inferior parietal lobule. The upturned end of the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus located in this lobe. The inferior parietal lobule is further divided into the supramarginal gyrus, angular gyrus, and arcus parieto occipital gyrus. Between the sensory and visual areas, the parietal lobe contains the sensory association area, areas 5 and 7, which is involved in stereognosis and sensory speech. Wernicke's area, sensory speech area, is located in the inferior part of the parietal lobe, spanning functional areas 22, 39, and 40. Wernicke's area is part of the auditory association cortex, Brodmann area 22, and it is connected to Broca's area via the arcuate fasciculus. Its primary function is speech comprehension and the interpretation of language through visual and auditory input. Temporal lobe. The temporal lobe contains the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus, superior temporal sulcus, and inferior temporal sulcus. These sulci divide the temporal lobe into the superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. The posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus contains the primary auditory cortex, Brodmann areas 41 and 42, which receives input from the medial geniculate body and is responsible for the perception and reception of auditory impressions. The rest of the superior temporal gyrus contains a secondary auditory cortex, area 22, which correlates auditory impulses with past memory and aids in sound identification. Occipital lobe. The sulci present in the occipital lobe are the transverse occipital sulcus, lateral occipital sulcus, and calcarine sulcus. These sulci divide the lateral surface of the occipital lobe into the arcus parieto occipital gyrus, superior occipital gyrus, and inferior occipital gyrus. The occipital lobe contains the primary visual area, area 17, and the secondary visual area. The primary visual area, area 17, is located in and around the calcarine sulcus. It receives input from the lateral geniculate body via the optic radiations, visual radiations or geniculocalcarine tract. Its function is the perception and reception of visual impressions. The secondary visual area, area 18, is located in the striate cortex on either side of the calcarine sulcus, situated on the medial aspect of the occipital lobe. It is responsible for integrating visual properties such as color, position in space, and illusory contours. This area also correlates visual impulses with past memory to recognize objects.